give it up for another day of advent of code. In this video, I'm going to be doing advent of code day seven um, and explaining the solutions. Every day, I'm going to be explaining that day's puzzles from advent of code. So if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and uh, push the notifications button. Um, and there's also going to be a playlist for all of past and previous videos. Um, so make sure to check that out. The link is in the description. Okay, let's dive right into it. Day seven, handy haversacks. You land at the regional airport in time for your next flight. In fact, it looks like you'll even have time to grab some food. <clears throat> All flights are currently delayed due to issues in luggage processing. Due to recent aviation regulations, many rules your puzzle input are being enforced about bags and their contents. Bags must be color-coded and must contain specific quantities of other color-coded bags. Apparently, nobody responsible for these regulations considered how long they would take to enforce. For example, consider the following, following rules. Light red bags contain one bright white bag, two muted yellow bags. Dark orange bags contain three bright white bags, four muted yellow bags. Bright white bags contain one shiny gold bag, and so on. They just give a bunch of rules. These rules specify the required contents for nine bag types. In this example, every faded blue bag is empty, every vibrant plum bag contains 11 bags, and so on. Okay, you have one shiny gold bag. If you wanted to carry it in at least one other bag, how many different bag colors would be valid for the outermost bag? Okay. Um, in this example, the number of bag colors, bag colors that can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag is four. How many bag colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag? Okay. So, <clears throat> I think I know how to approach this because I read the problem beforehand. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's uh, solve the problem. Okay, so that was quite a bit of work, but we got our answer to be 48, and that's not the right answer. Okay. Um, dang it. Okay, this is the first time we're getting one wrong. Please wait one minute before trying again. Okay, well... Hmm... I... Okay, well, I can't go into another session of just like speeding things up the video so um we'll have to do that though so i will have to modify the code that does this which is fine which is fine so so let's just let's just try again all right okay so we have arrived at a different answer it's 101 and okay i can explain how I did the problem as well as why I got it wrong the first time. So, um, yeah, let's just explain the first problem for now. So a lot of this, I think, is string processing. So you can see over here that um, this function just interprets a rule and then adds it to our list, which I'll explain later. But our idea is basically to do a tree. And kind of in a tree, you want to keep track of which like what are the nodes and what their parents are. So in our case, our nodes are the names of the bags. And then the relationship between different nodes is if one type of bag can, can contain another type of bag, then we keep track of that relationship. So for example, if a light red bag can, can contain a bright white bag, then we say um, a bright white bag has a parent of light red bag. And then <clears throat> we can add to a list. For example, um, children can have many parents. Uh, so in this example, a shiny gold bag can have a parent of a bright white bag, or it can have a parent of a muted yellow bag. So we want to keep track of all those relationships. And I, in fact, I can show you the code over here. Uh, if we just go back to our mini, mini uh, input case, then I can show you what the tree that we're trying to build is. So, okay, I know this is a little bit small. I don't know if I can zoom in on this, but basically we see here that, see a bright white bag, um, we're keeping track of this like as a map, as a dictionary. So a bright white bag can have parents of dark orange or light red. Dark olive can have shiny gold parents. Dotted black uh, can have a dark olive or vibrant plum parents. 
and so on. So basically, we're just keeping track of children as keys, and then we're like we're keeping track of what their parents can be. And how we do this is we have a function that interprets every single line of the input. Um, and it's pretty complicated, so I'll just copy a line from here, for example. So, okay. So the idea is that we want to take um, the first bag, um, and this is the parent, because the first bag that comes in the rule is going to contain other bags. So this is going to be our parent, and we identify that uh, in these two lines, or one line, I guess. Um, and then we look at the other half after the keyword contain. And contain is the keyword here because it only appears once, or we think it only appears once because it's probably not going to appear twice or anything. Um, so we look what happens after the contain, and then we see a list separated by comma space. And that's what we have over here. So we split it up by comma space, and then for every single element between the comma spaces, we can identify what the name of the bag is, and then we get our list of children. So we have our parent bag name over here, so it can contain all the children, all these children. So for each of these children, we add the parent as one of its parents. And that's basically it. If you're confused, um, and you, like that's pretty likely, um, the code is in the GitHub repository, which um, I will link to in the description. So yeah, take a look at this. So basically, overview, what this does is it takes a rule, and then it builds upon our tree, our dictionary, um, to say what parents a given child can have. Um, and child here, parents, they're all bag names. Okay, and then afterwards, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we get all possible bags that contain shiny gold bags. Um, and the mistake I made here in the first uh, in the first pass was I thought it was only like <clears throat> I thought we could only do uh, the very outermost bag. So like, you have to make sure you get all the bags. Like, no, not all the bags, but like you can only have the very outermost bags. So you can't have anything in between. Um, anyway. I, I just had a wrong in interpretation. <clears throat> the idea here is we just want to see what kinds of bags, if you go down the tree uh, of parent child, you will eventually get to a shiny white bag, a uh, shiny gold bag. Um, and how we do that is we actually start with a shiny gold bag and then we move up the tree um, going to the parents and then going to the parents of parents and then going to the parents of parents of parents. Um, and then whichever bags we see can eventually contain a shiny gold bag. So this strategy is uh, called depth first search. And basically we start with a root and that is this shiny gold bag. And then we want to move up the tree. That's kind of like a backwards tree. It's more, it's more like a graph, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's more like a graph, but that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so it's actually a graph, but we can think of it as a tree with uh, shiny gold bags at the very bottom. And then we move up like looking at all the parents and uh, we just keep track of which bags we've seen. And then for every bag we've seen, we look at its parents and then we just recursively go through the entire tree, looking at which bags um, can have shiny gold bags at the very bottom. So yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Um, and I think after the code is, th th this is getting a little bit more difficult, so it's not quite, I don't know, it's not quite as beginner friendly, um, but it's, it's totally still doable. Okay. So let's, let's move on to bar two. It's getting pretty expensive to fly these days, not because of ticket prices, but because of the ridiculous number of bags you need to buy. Consider again, your shiny gold bag and the rules from the above example. Faded blue bags contain zero other bags. Uh, okay, example. So a shiny gold bag must contain one dark olive bags and, and, and the seven bags within it plus two vibrant plum bags. In the 11 bags within each of those, 32 bags. Of course, the actual rules have a small chance of going several levels deeper than this example. Be sure to count all of the bags, even if nesting becomes topologically impractical. Okay. In this example, a shiny gold bag must contain 126 other bags. Whew. Okay, this is going to be considerably harder. 
I mean, not, not considerably hard. It's, it's not that hard. Okay, so at least we didn't get some ridiculous answer that was like huge. This isn't that. This is this is manageable. Okay, so our answer is 108.637. Okay, too high. Ooh. Okay, okay. Um. Mm. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, we're gonna have to do another one of these cuts. Ugh. Okay. Well. That is totally fine. That is totally fine. Um, yeah, okay, I guess, I guess we'll just go on debugging and I'll explain my mistake. Okay, I, I had an off by one error because um, I read like, um, no, because the answer was like, you have to find the number of bags inside your shiny gold bag but I counted the shiny gold bag, and you're not supposed to. So, yeah. Okay, well, at least we got it right. We got it right this time. Um, so, so we are good. And I'm going to explain this. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated than the first one. Um, I suppose that I should do the input data again and uh, explain. So let's just do this example. So um, we're going to print out the tree again, but this time the tree is a little bit different. So, okay, so this time the tree looks like this. Um, I know this is like, it must be really difficult to read, but um, instead of keeping track of the, the, the parents given a certain bag, we're gonna keep track of the children given a certain bag because we want to go downwards instead of upwards this time. Because the first time we were counting like how many bags can contain a shiny gold bag, and this time we want to count how many bags a shiny gold bag can contain. So in our tree this time, we're counting um, the children of a given bag instead of its parents. So we also have to keep track of its quantity because it says uh, two, uh, not, not two necessarily, but uh, we want to keep track of how many bags a, a given bag has to contain. So in this example, um, instead of saying a dark blue bag, must contain a dark violet bag. We say that a dark blue bag must contain two dark violet bags. So we, we want to keep track of quantity this time. And it's pretty much the same as the first time. Um, we just keep track of quantity as we go through our depth first search. So we keep track of the bags that we, we, we've we seen and that's inside this list called DFS. And uh, we also keep track of quantity inside this list. So when we go through all the elements in our um, in our like scene list we also keep track of the amount and then for the bag that we the, the bags that we pop off we have to um, add its children right we have to add its children to the bags that we've seen um, actually first we have to add the amount to our answer and then we look at all those children and then for every child for every, for, for every child we have to also append um, the amount of bags that uh, of that child is going to be the amount of our current bag, of the parent bag, times how many children need to be inside the parent bag. So we just do some multiplication here. Um, I don't know if that's clear, but basically we just do that. And then at the end, wait, why, why did I add it twice? Oh, yikes. Uh, I, ooh, okay, this was not supposed to be here, but, uh, okay, let's just ignore that ever happened. Um, so yeah, basically for every parent, we just add all its children to our search and then, uh, every child, we just keep track of the amounts by multiplying the number of, par uh, the amounts of the parent bags, uh, times the amount of the children that need to be inside the parent bag. Um, I know I'm repeating myself, but you know, I just want to make it super extra clear. So, uh. Yeah, I guess we should just go over an o overview of the second part. Um, we use the same we use the same uh, rule parsing as the first one, except this time we keep track of the children given a parent bag instead of um, keeping track of the parents given a child bag. Uh, and this way we can like go, we can just look inside all the bags that must be inside a shiny gold bag using depth first search. 
and that's basically it. So, hopefully that was clear. Um, yeah, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments. Um, uh, I will be uploading the code, today's code to GitHub. Um, you can find the link to the repository in the description. There will be a playlist of all um, past and hopefully future videos inside um, this playlist. Um, and that's, I don't know, I feel like that's it. Hopefully today's explanation was clear because today's problem was especially complicated. Uh, it had like so many different parts. So yeah, hopefully you learned something from this video and you ho uh, learn hopefully you learned something from the challenge. And yeah, that's basically it for today's video. I will see you tomorrow with day eight. Goodbye.